Amazing new time zone and reality, everyone. My name is Vel here at Science Way, and today we are assembling the 4D Vision Science Series Plant Cell. This set has 26 pieces, and as usual, you can time yourself. Beginner is 16 minutes, average is 13 minutes, and advanced is 9 minutes. So far, I am absolutely loving the anatomy series. There's only two different kits when it comes to the, to the 4D science series. There's a 4D animals, and then that goes into subcategories of insects and dinosaurs and uh, land animals. So for the science part, there's only two models, which is the plant cell and the animal cell. And of course, there's also a 4D vision human series as well. So while I am assembling this plant cell, I'm going to read the information in the book. So let's get started. The word cell comes from the Latin cellula, which means a small room. Robert Hooke was the first to study and record cells by using a microscope. The descriptive name cell for the smallest living biological structure was also given by him and used in his book that published in 1665. In 1837, a Czech Jan Evangelista Perkine first observed small granules at the plant tissue through a microscope. The first cell theory was first developed in 1839 by Matthias Jakob Schleiden and Theodore Schwann. The cell is a basic functional part in the smallest living unit in all known living organisms. Most of the living cells are very small in size and measured in unit ohm and weighed in nanogram. However, the eggs are the biggest single cell in most of the organisms. As we know, the ostrich egg is the biggest of them all. One single animal and plant may consist of a greater number of cells in different types, which are called multicellular. Some complex organisms, such as a human adult, may have over 100 trillion cells. On the other hand, some organisms may only consist of a single cell, such as bacteria and amoeba, which are called unicellular, unicellular excuse me, protist or monad. The plant cell is not only enclosed in a thin cell membrane, but also protected by a rigid protective cell wall. This small room contains many different organelles, including a membrane-bound nucleus. All higher plant cells have chloroplast. Only plant cells have cell walls and chloroplast. Animal cells do not have any. Next, we're going to read the different parts that make up the plant cell. First up is the nucleus. The nucleus is the most obvious organelle in most of eukaryotic cells, which is enclosed in a double membrane and consists of most of the cell's genetic material, organized as multiple long linear DNA molecules in a complex and large with a large variety of proteins, such as histones, to form chromosomes. Next is the mitochondria. It is a bacteria-sized power generator. It provides the energy needed for a cell to move, to divide, and to produce secretory products. They may have different shapes depending on the cell type. Scientists found that mitochondria contain DNA too. We call it mitochondrial DNA. Next is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is a vast network of membrane-bound vessels and tubules responsible for the production of hormones and other secretory, not secretory, products. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, has different functions depending on the specific cell type. Next is the ribosomes. These are packets of RNA and protein. As an essential role in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, it assembles individual amino acids into polypeptide chains of proteins. This process is called translation. Next, we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It appears pebbled due to numerous ribosomes on its surface. Proteins synthesized on these ribosomes are collected in the endoplasmic reticulum for transport throughout the cell. Next is cytoplasm. It is a semi-transparent jelly-like fluid that fills most cells. It consists of three major elements, the cytosol, organelles, and inclusions. The cytosol is the soup inside all the cells. Next we have the cytoskeleton. It is the skeleton contained within the cytoplasm, which helps to maintain cell shape. 
Actually, the internal movement of cell organelles, such as cell locomotion and muscle fiber contraction, could not function without the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton consists of three primary protein filaments, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate fibers. Next is the Golgi complex. It is also called the Golgi apparatus, Golgi body, or dictyosomes. This important apparatus has the function to manufacture and package the macromolecules such as proteins and lipids that are synthesized by the cell. The Golgi complex plays as a part of the endomembrane system of eukaryotic cells, which regulates protein traffic and performs metabolic functions. Next we have the secretory vessels. They are membrane-bound vessels derived from the Golgi complex and contain material, such as hormones and neurotransmitters, that is to be released from the cell and then transported to the cell surface for release. Next, we have the peroxisome. It is a membrane-bound packet of oxidative enzymes. In plant cells, they have functions of converting fatty acids to sugar and assisting chloroplasts in photorespiration. Peroxisomes also help to break down the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Next, we have the cell wall. Plant cells have rigid outermost boundary, or cell walls, of polysaccharides, mainly as a mechanical supporter. Unlike plasma membranes, materials cannot get through cell walls, but it has some special openings, called plasmodesmata, on the surface. Plant cells also have the plasma membrane as a selective boundary, too. A cell wall in a young cell is much thinner and not very rigid, which allows the young cell to grow. Next is the vacuole. It is a big membrane-bound sac that helps intracellular digestion, storing nutrients and releasing cell cellular waste. Sometimes, vacuoles may occupy 90% volume of a plant cell. Young plant cells often contain many small vacuoles. Water collected in cell vacuoles would press outward against the cell wall and produce rigidity in the plant. Without sufficient water, trigger pressure drops and the plant wilts. Lastly, we have chloroplast. It is specialized organelles found in all higher plant cells, which harvest energy from sunlight to complete the chemical reaction, which is 6 CO2 carbon dioxide, plus 6 H2O, water, plus sunlight over C6H12O6, or glucose, plus 6O2, oxygen. Plant cells manufacture glucose and other carbohydrates that they can store for later use. This process is called photosynthesis. Last information section is the Q&A. Question. Why are most of the leaves in plants the color green? That is because the plant cells in leaves containing chloroplast, which is for the process of photosynthesis, and the pigment of chloroplast in a mature healthy leaf is green. Question. Why do most of the leaves in plants turn red or brown during the fall? When the chlorophylls break down during the fall, the other colors become apparent. Anthocyanin and beta-cyanin in plants are the common reason that cause the leaves to turn red or brown during the fall. Question. What drives a cell to divide? The simple answer is genes. The DNA inside the nucleus of original and parental cell is the blueprint that is used to build an organism. Genetic material prompt drives the cell to divide into two cells, then two cells divide to make four, and so on and so forth. Question. Do all the plant cells look the same? No. There are many different kinds of plant cells, in different shapes and functions. Even in a same plant, their cells won't be the same in different parts of the plant. Question. Why do we always see a big empty space in the middle of a plant cell under the microscope? Don't be fooled, that is the vacuole which contains large amounts of water and stores other important materials such as sugars, ions, and pigments. Question. Why do most of the plants not need any food for their supply? That is because most of the plants can produce food by themselves during photosynthesis. They convert light energy into chemical energy. 
The raw materials include carbon dioxide and water, the energy source is sunlight, and the end products are oxygen and, energy rich, carbohydrates. That is the main energy source of the whole ecosystem on Earth. Now that all the information is done, let's go on to the assembly review. Like most of the kits I've gotten so far, there are some parts that are pre-assembled. Of course, you can just take them out if you want to actually assemble the whole thing from scratch, or you can just leave it in. It's really up to you. I didn't really have a hard time assembling this. Everything fit together perfectly. I just had to figure out which parts of the cell wall went where. All the pieces fit nicely together, so this was honestly really fun. It took me about somewhere between 15 to 17 minutes to assemble, so that's pretty good. I don't make it for the timing aspect of this, but that's okay. It looks really cool, and I learned a lot about plant cells. I had no idea they were so complex. I hope you learned something as well. And of course, this is another one added to my collection. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!